Okay, so we just <coughs> have been talking about lists, a couple lectures, a couple videos on lists. Uh, then the rest of this uh, chapter is basically just about data input. And the, for us, the most important, so by data input, well, for us, the most important data input is when we use read.csv. So that's a way to input, import data or input data, right? We read data from a CSV file. So that's what they're talking about. Different, wa you know, different ways to input or import data. So they talk about, um, they're all that you can import just, uh, where is it, CSV? I don't know. Anyway, you can import an Excel file. You can, I don't know what these other formats are. You can certainly type data into the keyboard. And then there's that this other stuff, which we won't be using, but, you know, someday, uh, when you're working with other data, not probably from our class, uh, you'll want to be able to import data. So here, text from a deli delimited text file. So read table and read CSV, wherever it is. And then um, also uh, importing from Excel, and there are various ways you can do that uh, to import from Excel. Usually you need a special special package, for example. You might use this first, and then there's, I think there's a read.excel. Um, here, this one. You can import a uh, an Excel file, just the one workbook at a time. I'm sorry, one worksheet at a time. So here's the workbook, and then you have to say which sheet it is. Okay, and then XML data and so on. So lots of stuff there, but we don't want to go through all of it because we're basically just going to use, uh, in this class, just importing by read.csv. Okay, now just to finish up this section on lists, he says, in this example you create a list with four components, a string, okay, we said that. You can also specify elements of the list by indicating a component number or name within double brackets, and this is what we saw. So we can get to the second one, and we can get to this. Now, I, I went further and I said, if you just do a single bracket, that also gives you something, but we said that gives you like an, a list, but only part of the list, part of the original list. And I guess the same thing would work here as well. So these both refer to the same four element numeric vector, right? This and this are the same thing. Uh, but if you use the single brackets, it's not the same thing. That's what I've been trying to say. Um, okay. Uh, lists are important, are structures, for two reasons. First, they allow you to organize uh, and recall disparate information. So you can have all kinds of stuff held in a single list in a simple way. Second, the results of many R function return lists. Well, we'll see this later. But... Uh, so we'll, I'll bring, we'll just ignore that for the time being, but we, you will see that later. Okay, and then finally, um, this is really just for people who, are, who have done other kinds of programming and comparing the language of R to other languages. In other languages, the dot usually has a very important meaning, but it doesn't in R. So the dot usually uh, indicates like an object and then a property, if you know anything about uh other languages, but it doesn't have that meaning here. So it's just a, just a, it doesn't have any significant name, any any significance when it's in an object name. Okay, but it, we saw that a dollar sign does, and it's kind of what similar to what a dot is in other languages. So this is like the data frame, and then a variable within that or a column within that data frame, or this could be a list, and then. Uh, one of the objects or elements of the list. So, dollar sign. And then um, it says about comments. And when you so we often want to put comments in our programs, and they say that maybe you can read that yourself. And then um, here, here we have a vector which only has three elements, so it doesn't make sense to refer to the seventh element. But R will basically let me do this assign 10 to the seventh element, but then what it gives me is 8, 6, 4, the first three elements, but then it says NA, NA, NA for the next three. And now there's the fifth, sixth, and seventh, I'm sorry, the 
fourth, fifth, and sixth elements are Na means not available, and then the seventh is the tenth. Okay, so that's what R will do. And then um, this, now we're only referring to one elements one through three, and if we reassign that to X, then we're shrinking it back down to the original X that it, w it was before. R doesn't have scalar values, that means single numbers, it only has, every, every single number is actually a vector. We've seen a little of that. Uh, R indices start at one, not at zero, so this means that here, x1, means the eight, right? And many other programming languages, to access this, you'd have to write x0 here, which is pretty weird, but that's the way most programming languages work. And variables can't be declared in x, so if you know about programming. Okay, so that's all for this chapter uh, four. You might want to take a look at just this one section in the library. Read this yourself. This tells you how to play with this interface here, the data editor. Okay, and we will go on to chapter three.